It's that time of the week where we talk about the very best comic books that you can buy this week. Unfortunately, Drew and the folks from Comics Elite are not really available this week, but I do have a ringer to come in and stand in for Drew. Gabe from Comics Elite, how you doing, Gabe? Gabe from, <laughs> Gabe from Comics Opinion. <laughs> I got uh, on the mind. Oh, <laughs> uh, you had it. You almost had it. You almost nailed it. You almost nailed it. Oh, so it. close. Uh, no, it's all right. Uh, hey, Wes, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I um, love talking about good comics. And today we've got a nice selection of good comics for everyone to check out. That's true. We've got six comics to talk about, two yep. indies, two Marvel, two DC. So we got a nice selection there. Starting out with the indies, we're recommending The Ambassadors, number one from Image Comics, Mark Miller, Frank Quietly. Mark Miller, everything he touches nowadays seems to turn to gold. Everything he's releasing, you could tell it's the best story he could release. This one's really interesting because it's not nearly as dark as what Mark Miller has done in the past. We have this private corporation that has decided because governments are trying to make superheroes to take that power out of their hands, make their own heroes that are going to service the world. And obviously, they're not American. They're actually, I believe, Chinese. And people are skeptical, to say the least. Really, really interesting start out to this comic book. I was shocked that he was able to, to wrap me up this quickly. Yeah, Mark Miller is just probably the only creator right now that uh, can almost do no wrong. Uh, his stuff is great. This comic is fun. It's it's definitely adult because there's violence. There's, you know, uh, I'm not going to spoil it too much. There's a suicide. There's, there's, there, are, there are a lot of dark themes in it, but there's a sharp, satirical wit to the story. Some of the one-liners are fantastic, and they hit on multiple levels. It's very subversive. So if you if you like stories that are just kind of like aren't afraid of poking fun at society, but not in a weird political kind of way, just like having – government characters that say the wrong thing at the wrong time and with an interesting story about yeah about a private company that's decided to create their own superheroes to be the the, the bleeding edge leader in superhero technology in the world uh this was the story grabs you right away it, it, there's a lot of twists and turns the characters are interesting the narrative flows well and it's a, it's a really fun story not in a fun kind of kid haha kind of way but just really entertaining and really engaging Mark Miller has said this is the most ambitious project he's ever tried to accomplish within comic books. And just seeing the beginning, I kind of believe him. Yeah, I, I, I trust it. I mean, it, th there are so many different directions this first issue can go uh, that and on a global scale. So uh, if it's going to be a big uh, if it's going to be a big project and a big story, I believe him. And you can definitely pick that up on the first issue. This is not the kind of thing where you have to ease into it. This is not the kind of story where you have to say, just give it a chance. You read this first issue, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to get hooked on it. Absolutely. And love seeing Frank Quietly. We don't see him all that much in comic books anymore, although I do not believe he's going to be the artist on every issue. I think there's actually revolving artists for the ambassadors as they come out, but if you haven't checked that one out, absolutely do. We're also recommending Rocket Man and Rocket Girl number one from Dynamite. Jacob, yep. Edgar, and Jordy Perez here. Dynamite has definitely been leaning into that kind of pulpy old school hero thing here. And the art in Rocket Man and Rocket Girl definitely screams old school pulpy comic book. Yeah, if uh, Dynamite has this uh, opportunity here to kind of lean into those public domain pulp era type characters, and Rocket Man and Rocket Girl are, are part of their overall uh, the project, which is a, sort of a team of superheroes from across the multiverse. Uh, but this takes us back to like the 1940s during World War II, where it's just old school action adventure from a pulp serial kind of uh, point of view, and it's just it works straight up. It, you you get the People in rocket packs. You've got uh, bank robbers escaping in helicopters, and the, the the voice and the tone and the art all works within that kind of 1930s, 1940s era type of classic story. So if you're into that kind of thing, if you like those classic pulp serial adventures, this one's going to be like like the Rocketeer. If you're into the Rocketeer, this one's definitely definitely going to be right up your alley. Yeah, so it's very interesting. We've got a lot of number ones this week, and like to be able to recommend new series because. It feels like we've been in a bit of a, a drought lately, but we got two number ones from the indie comics. We also have a number one coming out from Marvel, Clobber in Time, number one, Steve Scrochi. Definitely in the vein of the old school Marvel Presents or Marvel 2-in-1. This time we get Ben Grimm, The Thing, and we get Bruce Bader, The Hulk, very quickly are removed from the sea. They go to another planet in the future, and they're fighting kaijus and all this great stuff that you'd want to see from a Ben Grimm, Bruce Bader, Hulk thing, team up book. But really it's the moments between the characters in between the battles that I think makes this comic book better than it could have been. I think this was a lot of fun 
Steve Scrochi is a really great artist. It shines through here. And I just had so much fun with this. It doesn't feel like the thing gets the credit he deserves. Not really treated like the, the popular character that he is. And I love seeing him getting the love here. We have a tendency, uh, with especially within Marvel and DC, uh, over the last couple of years, that every story has to be this dark, dim, gritty grounded, ultra-realistic story because they, they, they lean too much into the world outside your window. This is just a straight-up two guys who have a mutual respect for each other but don't are, aren't afraid to smack-talk each other and get sent off into this uh, distant planet in a distant time where they have to fight these giant monsters to survive and, and do the right thing by this small alien tribe. This book is just, it's a lot of fun. And it's a series of effectively one-shots where the thing goes off with another hero in each issue and it's going to go do some clobbering. Uh, but there's a connective tissue piece about this mysterious stranger that sent him off into this far world in the first place that actually in and of itself is a pretty decent decent mystery. So there's a lot going for this issue and it's just straight up fun. So if you're if you're looking for the thing in the Hulk to just do a lot of smashing, or maybe do a little smack talking and just and really enjoy themselves, this is a great comic to pick up. Yeah, I was very very happy with that when I had been given the heads up from Yule Carter, it did not disappoint. Definitely recommending Strange Academy Finals number 5 as well. Scotty Young, Umberto Ramos continue just producing a flawless comic series. I absolutely love this one. I like the place where they're at where you have these young heroes, but they've all grown so much. They've, they've learned how to forgive and allow their friends that have made mistakes to come back. And it seems to have, I don't know, emboldened this character, Emily, where she hates them more because they've grown as people and become better heroes. And you can kind of see they have this upward trajectory that she doesn't personally have anymore because she kind of turned her back on the Academy and all of her friends. And she's had this really great turn that I think has been really effective. In this issue specifically, we also learn more about Doyle Dormammu, who you would think would have a very dark future ahead of him, but it feels like maybe he's going a different route. And I just, I love the way that it's executed. Scotty Young knows how to write all ages comic books. And Umberto Ramos, you can tell he loves this series because every page looks so dynamic. Yeah, uh, Scotty Young, I think, on the whole, is traditionally known as an artist, but he's doing a bang-up job writing this series, and, and Umberto Ramos's art is fantastic. The they're, they're so the characters are so expressive, and yeah, they have a little bit of a stylized anatomy to them. They don't look like the true blue, uh, traditional sort of beefed-up, athletic, uh, masculine-type characters, or, or, or just like super athletic-type characters, I should say. Uh, but the the art just looks fun. It's expressive, and Right, you get a lot of character growth in this issue, particularly with Doyle. You find out how he came to be, who, how he is, or who he is. So that's good character growth. It's good character building, and you, and every every uh, like young team, new generation type team that Marvel is doing or DC is doing should start off this way. You take the characters, you start them from a low place, and you build them up. And they've just been building it every single issue. And this this issue in particular is fantastic. Yeah, Strange Academy. I hate to see that it's coming to an end because it's been so perfect the entire time, but definitely check that one out if you haven't already. Let's move over to DC Comics. We do have two more recommendations. I'm going to recommend tentatively Action Comics 1053, Bill Kennedy Johnson, Rafa Sandoval on the main story here, and I only really recommend the main story. Do not go read the Power Girl stuff. It's not very good. It'll probably turn you off just to the character in DC Comics in general. But I like that action comics feel so different than Superman, almost like when you had the the Superman action with Dan Jurgens, as well as um, Pete Tomasi when they were writing it, where they serve different purposes. This is clearly the Superman family book, seeing the family kind of go against Metallo and the things that he's doing, attacking John Irons. We've also got this new group, Blue Earth, that have come under the control of Metallo, and that kind of blows up in his face by the end. And the art is really good. I'm glad that it's serving a different purpose. If you love the Superman family, and it's a big family now, definitely check this comic book out. But don't read the backups. They really shouldn't be including those because there are a reason not to buy it because they're charging you for it. Yeah, the, the main story by Philip Kennedy Johnson, where you have essentially the super family against now the Metallo family, is a great story. You can see where it's going. You get a lot of the super family character interactions with each other, uh, kind of get to know their personalities a little bit and understand better their their, their nature of the relationships, That's the, 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 which is the main story of the book, which I think takes up about 20 pages, works really well. The backup, the second, or I should say the first backup, I think is uh, Dan Jurgens, where mm -hmm. he's focusing on a young John Kent, is not as good 
but it's not terrible either. It's, it's showing you like an interesting slice of John Kent's early life. He's in this uh, conflict with a alien princess who crash lands on Earth. So th- there is some merit there. It's not as good as the Philip Kelly Johnson story, uh, but it, it's it's not bad. And, it, and if you're if you're like got a deep hunger to revisit young John Kent, uh, this this will give you something to fix on. The third story, which is the Power Girl story, is is. It's garbage. You can just disregard that. So if you just focus on the main story by Philip Kennedy Johnson and maybe with a little bit extra from the Dan Jurgens backup, you're in great shape with this one. Yeah, it's a, unfortunately there is a little bit yeah. of a drawback because of the the backup story, especially the Power Girl one, just not living up to the to the potential of the other ones. Two out of three. Final record, absolutely. Yeah. The final recommendation from DC is Star Girl: The Lost Children, number five. Jeff yeah. Johns, Todd Knock, just a really great creative pairing there. To have those two working together, obviously Jeff Johns is a creative star girl, and this is a mini series that he's doing. I believe it's about to wrap up, mm-hmm. but if you can't get enough Star Girl, there's been a good quality series for you. Basically, what it is is Star Girl and Emiko go find this island that's trapped out of time where all the sidekicks back from the golden age on forward have been kidnapped and they don't age so now they have this overarching mystery of who's kidnapping the children and why you get a little bit of an insight into what's going on there in this issue but this issue really takes all the sidekicks and has them engage in an all-out battle against the uh, child minder who's the person that kidnapped them and it's big fun battles todd knox art is amazing i just love todd Todd knox art in this issue and you get a lot of sort of golden age type superhero rogues with these sidekicks who think they're still in the 1930s and 40s and 50s in some cases and 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 you get a lot of uh interactions between the characters and and what's amazing about this issue is you have so many different sidekicks yet all of them get a little moment to shine to get you to to, to either reintroduce you to them if you've heard of them before or if you haven't to get to know who they are and it just builds up this big team i can see this title once it ends moving forward into like a young gen- jsa or a jsa the next generation or something to that effect and and i think people will enjoy it a lot so those are our recommendations this week we had uh, some really good comic books on the indie marvel and dc scene so very good all around i do want to say thank you very much to gabe for joining us from comical opinions as well as weird science do you have anything to say gabe no just go read more comics and if you're not sure which ones to get follow thinking critical and we'll, we'll have videos like this every single week gabe is absolutely correct Follow Thinking Critical, you get all your comic book news, you get your comic book recommendations, we'll get you your pop culture news and all that stuff. And based on what YouTube has seen that you like to watch and what I've created, they believe this is the next video you should watch. If you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out right now. I made it just for you.